All right, guys, how's it going? It's the East Banglers. We're out here doing it again, trying to get on some bass. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned. We're out here in the float. Got the float rigged up. Everything's good to go. Um, you know, it's tough right now, everything being shut down, the lockdown, the virus. Everybody's scared, obviously. The older people, 50 plus, they definitely have a really good reason to be scared. But in general, you know, this is hurting the economies, it's hurting fish, it's just hurting everybody, and it's kind of interesting to see how, you know, everything's gonna try to structure itself, you know, get back to the way it was after this is over. But, um, you know, hopefully we got some fisheries that open up sometime soon, but the ones that were open for a time being, they were getting flooded, like right now I'm at a private pond, and you know this was getting some pressure from a couple of the people that live around here and they have permission to fish it so they were hitting it quite hard i mean i would say this is a small pond you know it might be a quarter acre maybe it's a little bit bigger maybe it's a third of an acre but most of it's really shallow most of it's really weedy got a lot of vegetation it's got timber and wood all over trees lay downs etc um, very little rock but point being that um, this place gets hit pretty hard I'd say three to five fishermen a day um, unless the day is maybe rain or you know some really terrible weather uh, you know you might only have one fisherman maybe none come by but uh, you know it's been getting a lot more pressure in the last few weeks than it's probably had in the last few I don't want to say in the last year let's just say that maybe even a year and a half so all right keep that in mind stay tuned hopefully we hook up all right have a good one so guys we've been fishing for a few minutes uh we're surrounded by like giant ass um trees sticking out of the water everywhere timber and uh you know what's really funny is for the most part it's hard to tell where these fish are. You'd think, you know, oh, they'd be holding tight to cover. Some days they were, some days they weren't. I don't really know what's going on. Water temps 52, 53. Um, you know, I'm gonna start off with a small spinner bait and then I'm gonna work up to a larger spinner bait and then I'm gonna try a couple different baits. Um, maybe some top water today. I feel like there's some sunny weather coming up after this and this is like the last time to really throw top water and be able to throw it all like you know until basically like April and May probably aren't going to have too many days with overcast like heavy overcast and rain whereas the next few days should so I'm going to try to take advantage of that because there might not be a good time to throw top water you know or very many opportunities you know unless you get out to the lake really early or you're fishing really late and that's a short window you're looking at a 30 to 45 minute you know bite window that could be excellent and I'd rather have all day you know, figure out you know what colors work best you know what everything uh, what type of top water works best and then um, you know then I can come out, you know, early in the morning or late in the evening and have a lot more success because I already know what they want. One of the things I love about the flow tube is it is more stealthy than a kayak. It's more stealthy than any kind of boat. And, you know, giant oh we got a giant oh yes i mean this fish is just so healthy so chunky it's not even funny um i'm out here tossing it you know something different and all of a sudden 
uh, it was just like, bam, and, uh, oh, I'm super excited, I'm super stoked, check this fish out, guys, oh, and he had the hook good, he was going nowhere, I was worried he might get off, this fish was going nowhere. All right, guys, I'm not sure what's going on, but we got, like, gunfire. Did you guys, I'm not sure if you guys heard it. You probably didn't because the GoPro was down. Oh, there it is again. Oh, shoot, man, it sounds like it's coming from that way. I don't know what's going on. Somebody's shooting. I don't really like it. All right. Uh... So, oh, let's check this fish out, guys. I mean, this thing is just absolutely a beast. Fish out. Look at this mug. Oh, dude. Give it some water real quick and then I'll get another shot of it. Yeah, you were fun to catch, buddy. You sure were. So now we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna let this fish go. It's freaking huge. Oh. oh boy. What a treat. Started changing up the way I was working my my lure and bait because uh, it wasn't working no more, you know. So I don't know. Fishing an area I haven't fished before really and you know whatever this fish is eating, whatever it's eating. Oh my gosh, it's teeth, like, they're tearing my thumb up. I mean, they are sharp. Oh man. There's been a couple people popped in today real quick. They threw a couple casts. They stayed for 20, 30 minutes, maybe 15 to 30 minutes each. Three people that I saw, and they all left. I stayed the course. Boy, look at that, folks. Now that's a big fish. Now check. Oh my gosh. Oh, playing with 
with you guys. I don't know what it is about these private ponds, but they produce monster bass. Like, oh my gosh, never in my life have I, you know, caught so many fish back to back to back to back of this size. It's incredible and it's awesome. Oh yeah, you guys, the point is I'm really depressed. I just fished um, an area I fished before one time and I haven't caught anything and I'm just burning this thing, kind of fishing it erratically but really fast and all of a sudden I hook up but this fish doesn't feel like the rest of these fish I'm catching. This thing feels just absolutely like a tank. My whole rod loads up. I feel the weight. Um, I see the fish surface. I see the mouth come out of the water. And uh, somehow, he, you know, obviously he shook my bait. And, you know, I had complete slack at that moment in my line. And I'm just... My heart for that, for that moment when I... When I felt the bite, when I lifted my rod up um, and felt that fish take the bait, load up the rod, I mean, I did, and it was absolutely just overpowering. It was like, it was incredible. For the moment I was in, hooked up into it, it was just uh, it was awesome. So today, for some reason, these fish seem pretty active. I'm going to hope they remain active throughout, you know, the rest of my day here. Um, we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. That's really depressing because, you know, my personal best bass is quite large, you know. Uh, it's 12 4 3, you know, so that's hard to beat. But that fish, believe it or not, I mean, it wouldn't shock me if it came close to that weight. Um, I, I just have only, you know, I had braid. Uh, right now I got 30 pound test braid on. And I'm telling you, I got a medium heavy 7 foot 5, um, you know, rod. It's just, that fish is just huge. Alright, so guys, let me talk real quick. I want to do a review real quick on Smelly Jelly. This is the uh, Pro Guide formula. Um, and honestly, it's uh, although it's a jelly, there's a couple different kinds of gel on the market. You know, there's like a pasty gel, um, you know, and then there's this gel. This is more of um, a thinner gel, and it doesn't really stay on as long. It might only stay on 20 minutes or 25 minutes instead of staying on uh, up to 45 minutes. You know, when you use like a pro cure gel, that's real pasty. Um, so, in my opinion, this really is effective. It, it's also really awesome because you can use it on anything and it doesn't hinder the action. So, whether you're fishing, um, you know, some kind of a skirted bait, um, any kind of a bait with, um, maybe a feathered tail on your treble, um, stuff like that. It doesn't really hinder the action of that feather. Um, you know, different, all kinds of baits. This is really unique in that, um, you know, it stays on a good amount of time, but it's also really thin. So it's not, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, um, you know, sometimes I'm not a fan of putting that 
pasty procure on my split rings and stuff like that. I want those split rings to have full motion. Full all right, so guys, let me talk real quick. I want to do a review real quick on Smelly Jelly. This is the uh, Pro Guide formula, um, and honestly, it's uh, although it's a jelly, there's a couple different kinds of gel on the market. You know, there's like a pasty gel, um, you know, and then there's this gel. This is more of um, a thinner gel, and it doesn't really stay on as long. It might only stay on 20 minutes or 25 minutes instead of staying on uh, up to 45 minutes. You know, when you use like a Pro Cure gel, that's real pasty. Um, so, in my opinion, this really is effective. It, it's also really awesome because you can use it on anything and it doesn't hinder the action. So, whether you're fishing. Um, you know, some kind of a skirted bait, um, any kind of a bait with, um, maybe a feathered tail on your treble, um, stuff like that. It doesn't really hinder the action of that feather. Um, you know, different, all kinds of baits. This is really unique in that, um, you know, it stays on a good amount of time, but it's also really thin. So it's not, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, um, you know, sometimes I'm not a fan of putting that pasty procure on my split rings and stuff like that. I want those split rings to have full motion, full range of motion and action. Where, you know, if I'm fishing a jig, if I'm fishing any kind of a bait with a skirt on it or any kind of a bait with any kind of, you know, anything, I mean, even if it's just a... Um, a worm or something like that. Um, I, I feel like uh, the smelly jelly also adds something unique. So that Pro Cure is excellent too, guys. You know, it works in a variety of situations and excels, in my opinion. You know, um, when you're fishing, you know, for example, um, when you're fishing power eggs, or when you're fishing mice tails, or when you're fishing tubes plastic crawfish, um, small ones, you know, things like that, um, you know, that really, really works good, you know, when they, when it's just that bait, um, that stays on for a long time, and, but, you know, um, I'm not big on using it, um, on baits, I'm trying to get the most, most, you know, so I'm just not big on using the Procure for everything, but check out the Smelly Jelly. That's what we're talking about today. Awesome, awesome stuff. I can't say enough stuff about it. You know, it might look a little pricey, but like I said, it lasts forever. Those oils, you can go through a 6 to $9 uh, jar of oil or whatever, and you know, you can go through that in months, whereas this will last years. I mean, it, yeah, it's twelve dollars or thirteen plus tax. You know, that's that's a little pricey, but it lasts forever. I'm gonna do some more reviews on some more things that uh, I think are just essential to the fishing, you know, to bass fishing. But I use this stuff on trout baits. I use this stuff on mac baits. Just use it on everything. Guys, go out there and get yourself some smelly jelly. This stuff is good for freshwater fishing and saltwater fishing. It's excellent. It can be used on any kind of lure, any kind of bait that's out there. It doesn't matter. Any kind of material. I'm telling you guys, get yourself some. Check out my little...